This is Rock and Roll English. Real people, real English. Here's your host, Martin Johnston. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Rock and Roll English. Episode number 53, I believe. Wow. Wow. Um, In today's show, I speak to Dan the Man about um, London, because that is where I am at the moment. But as always, I'm very busy. Well, I'm keeping myself busy doing a course. And because of this, I didn't have much time to prepare. And I had to record the podcast in a very strange room. So it's possible you may hear um, a very, very small echo when I speak. Please let me know if you notice something different because I am very particular about the quality of the sound. I always want it to be 100% perfect, as Dan the Man will tell you, because I'm always moaning at him for the quality of the audio. And remember, moaning means complaining. But it's not too bad, and if it's a little bit difficult, that is sometimes a good thing because it makes you pay more attention. And when you listen to English outside, obviously it's not always the best quality. Anyway, I will stop talking now. And this is Dan the Man and me speaking about 10 things you probably didn't know about London. Well, I don't think they're 10. I can't remember the number, but there are some facts about London. Anyway, happy listening. Dan the Man, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? Fantastic. Have you made any speeches since our last podcast? Not one. Have you? (laughs) I have actually. Um, I did a speech um, at International House in London about um, the benefits of listening to podcasts. Ah, so there was a point to your speech. (laughs) Yeah, there was. And obviously all the rockers and rollers know the benefits and will enjoy the benefits in the next... I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. So are you ready to start, Dan? Yes. How do we start? I can't remember. It's so difficult to remember these things. Are you going to ask me this every week? (laughs) Routine is important in life, Dan, okay? It is important. A review. A review. So we have a review um, that came via the app Podbean, actually. And it says, hi, Martin and Dan. I like the fact she put my name first. But anyway. Well, you're the leader, apparently. Exactly. Well, not apparently. We had an official referendum. But anyway, let's not go back there again. Anyway, so, hi, Martin and Dan. I really appreciate you. Your podcast is engrossing me. I've been trying to learn English for years. It was all about boring grammar, lectures, and boring teachers. Your show encourages me to learn a foreign language in a different alternative way. You guys are smart, funny, and full of good energy. Thanks a lot. With great respect, Allah from Israel. I think we are boring though, aren't we? You certainly are. (laughs) That's what I thought, but um, apparently not. Um, And good energy. I mean, how much good energy are you giving me or giving everyone? None. There's a lot of things to talk about there, but we love thank it. You. So yeah. thank you very much, Ala. Um, so going back to that speech I told you I made, where did I make it, Dan? In London. <laughs> Correct. And that is exactly what today's podcast is about, London. The first thing to say is Dan and I are not actually from London. We're from very near London, a much better place, though. So we I don't really associate myself too much with London. What about you, Dan? Mm, Yeah, not really. But it is easier to tell people I'm from London. Yeah, if someone is from the UK, I tell them where I'm from, which is Essex. But someone outside of the UK, it's easier to say periphery of London. Um, Anyway, that's the boring stuff. So let's get to the rock and roll stuff. I've got some random facts, as usual, about London, and we're just going to have a chat about them. Are you okay with that, Dan? Of course. Okay. So the first thing to say is a law, apparently, that exists in the Houses of Parliament. And apparently it is illegal to die in the Houses of Parliament. (laughs) So what happens if you die? That's the really interesting thing, Dan. Um, That's quite a smart question. Because what is the punishment if you die? 
Um, well, you tell me. You're the one who's done that. <laughs> no. Well, I, I did some research, Dan, but, you know, I have a busy life. I can't do that much research, so I don't know the answer. Okay. Well, hopefully no one dies. Well, yeah. So if you're in Parliament, remember, just don't die, okay? Just die outside because it's illegal. Unless you're Boris Johnson, then feel free. <laughs> So Boris Johnson was the ex-mayor of London. And notice I said they're the mayor and not the major, which many people say. And as you probably understood by Dan's comment, he doesn't like Boris very much. Do you? <laughs> I think he is a complete idiot as well. Um, so I've got something about the tube here. So what is the tube, Dan? The underground. The underground or... Many people from like European countries call it the metro. The Americans call it the subway, which we hate. Um, but in London, yeah, it's called the tube. Um, and apparently, many strange things have been found on the tube, including um, a coffin. <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't know what a coffin is, it's not really a nice thing. But when you die, the sort of box they put you in is called a coffin. How did they get it on the tube? Well, <laughs> maybe someone died in Parliament and then yeah. they just put him on the tube and then forgot about him. Yeah. Could have been a woman, actually. So I don't know why I said him. And how did they, how did they get it through the barrier? Good question again, Dan. That's two intelligent questions you have asked today. The barrier is obviously the part that you need to pass with a ticket when you're on the tube. Um, yeah, it's a good question. And the looks people must have been giving them. Mm-hmm. You know, but, you know, so again, we've learned two things already. One, don't die in Parliament. Two, don't leave coffins on the tube, okay? Don't leave them anywhere. Don't, <laughs> exactly. Don't take your eye off it, okay? <laughs> um, but on the tube situation, Dan, have you ever left anything on the tube? Or the classic, have you ever fallen asleep on the tube like many drunken English hooligans do? On a train, but not on the tube. <laughs> The train going back to Essex, which, remember, is where we're from. Yeah, and then I left at a station in the middle of the night with no money and no battery on my phone. I had to walk back. <laughs> How long did it take? Well, fortunately, I managed to flag down a car after about 20 minutes. That's not... A... I was hoping you were going to say 10 hours. But nice rock and roll vocabulary there when he said... Um, I was able to flag down a car. Obviously, the word flag, most people know what that means. But when it's used as a verb like this, especially with cars, it's used to stop cars like the crazy people on the streets do. Like Dan the Man. Mm -hmm. What about you? Um, I have fallen asleep on a bus, but not on the tube. But I did witness something very amusing, very funny on the tube once when... I was going to work. It was very crowded, so many people. And then a woman fainted. So when you faint, it's when you are unconscious and you hit the floor. And and it doesn't sound funny, but believe me. <laughs> well, it was after, anyway. Um, and when she hit the floor, there was absolutely no sympathy from anyone. In fact, I looked at the people saying like, oh, fucking hell, I'm, I'm going to be late now. <laughs> So she's on the floor unconscious. People say, like, let's pick her up. So I picked her up, put her on the train platform and basically said, let's go. What? And left her there? Well, there were some people on the platform that I think helped her. But <laughs> it was just, I mean, to be honest as well, I was one of those horrible people. That something happens to me when I'm in London. I just become a complete bastard. I'm just not a human. Mm-hmm. Um, a depressing fact I heard about, well, I read about the underground is that you spend four and a half weeks underground. That, uh, that's the average Londoner. What, in a lifetime? No, in a year. Yeah, that's awful. That is fucking shit. Um, and you probably know this, Dan. London is famous, obviously, for its black taxis. Or what do we generally call them, Dan? Cabs. Cabs, black cabs taxis it's the same and to become a taxi driver in london what do you have to do dan take the knowledge test the knowledge and you have to know every single street in all of london and it takes two to four years to memorize that that's only black cabs though 
That's only black cabs. Well, that's what we're talking about, Dan. Yeah, but it's not taxis in general. <laughs> okay, so black cabs. But cab drivers are also famous for being, you know, not the best people in the world. Um, have you any experience talking to cab drivers, Dan? Uh, yeah, I once got a cab late at night trying to get the last train home and he was asking me the directions. <laughs> He obviously didn't do the yeah. knowledge. Well, yeah, I said to him, mate, you're the cab driver. <laughs> yeah, I just do my absolute best not to talk to because they generally just say racist stuff. So mm. I just think mm, not the best person in the world to talk to. So if you don't mind, my friend, let's just stay here in silence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you tip cab drivers? Um, what do you think the answer to that question is? <laughs> No. So, but tip is when you give them extra money. In fact, in the past, I've taken a taxi and it's like £5.80. I gave him £6 and he looked at me. And then I just, <laughs> You're waiting for the change. I put out my hand and said, yes, I do want that 20p. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, so the best thing I found out about this um, is there is a place called Postman's Park. And I don't actually know where it is, but um, there's a place called Postman's Park in London and it's full of memorials to like commemorate ordinary people who did heroic acts. So, you know, we don't have to concentrate on all the big famous celebrities all the time. Mm -hmm. Just go to Postman's Park and see the ordinary people. Um, so, Dan, I want to know if you have ever done anything to get into postman's park because you know when you go you know hopefully it won't be any day soon but i will try to get you in at postman's park so what have you done in your life what's something nice well heroic nice something like this mm. i was once running along and i saw a car broken down and i offered to push him to uh push start the car I was pushing the car, and after about 20 seconds, I thought, why am I still pushing this? And then I found out he'd run out of petrol, and he <laughs> asked me to push him half a mile to the next petrol station. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> well, that's, that's, I don't know if we can get you in at Postman's Park for that, but I will, I will have a word. So when I say I will have a word, I will try my best. I will speak to someone. But you also used some rock and roll vocabulary there, Dan, when you said the car had broken down. We use that especially for cars when they've stopped working. So here's another question for you, Dan. Is London Bridge the one that, you know, is very famous and opens up to let boats pass? No. Actually, I've got a funny story about this. Um, yeah, me too. But <laughs> just it's probably the same to... story, I'd imagine. <laughs> I just want everybody to know because many people think London Bridge is not the very nice one that opens. That is called... Tower Bridge. Tower Bridge, exactly. London Bridge is the one opposite and is generally a bit shit. But anyway, let's go to your funny story, Dan. Well, years ago, um, I think uh, an American, I think it's an American businessman, wanted to want well, bought um, London Bridge for some few million pound, and was disappointed because he thought he was buying Tower Bridge. Exactly. So they took it apart, sent it across. There you go. Do your research before is the lesson we've learned from that. You have told me that before, Dan. One, I didn't think it was funny. Um, two, maybe interesting, but, you know, not so much. It's definitely true, though. Okay, it's definitely true. Thank God. Um, my story involves a drunken night out with a friend, and we were waiting for another friend, and he was texting someone on the bridge, and he had his hands like over the bridge so i came behind him and pretended to scare him and then in this he threw his phone into the air <laughs> and then there was complete silence as we just saw it go bloop, into the river <laughs> so he lost his phone <laughs> well why are you holding your phone over the bridge I exactly mean... he was asking for trouble um, but I did actually buy him a new phone, Dan. So Do I know this person? Yes, Mark Carroll. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it funnier. But maybe, actually, I've just thought now, 
buying him a new phone, maybe I can get in at Postman's Park for Obviously that. Obviously not. You had to buy him a new phone. It was your fault. <laughs> we we established, Dan, it was his fault. Um. Anyway, so apparently the top of Tower Bridge, remember, this is the famous one, um, was a place where tourists could go, actually, and visit. But now you can't because apparently there were too many prostitutes there. What are they doing up there? <laughs> exactly. Maybe they were selling that as like a tourism package. Like, go yeah. up the tower, have sex with a prostitute. Incredible views. <laughs> Sounds very romantic, but unfortunately now we can't do that. But I've got a few other things about prostitutes, actually. Oh, yeah. This is where most of your research was done, wasn't it? <laughs> exactly. Um, what is another word, though, Dan, for prostitute? Hooker. Hooker, exactly. Um, and there's some street names in London um, that are quite strange. One is called Ha Ha Road, which, you know, hilarious. And the other one is called Hooker's Road, which... A lot of prostitutes down there. Yeah, m maybe they went from the top of Tower Bridge and they thought, mm -hmm. right, we need a new place to go, so let's get a new road and call it Hooker's Road. Yeah. Um, interesting and there's an, another rumor so remember a rumor is something which we don't know is true that buckingham palace was built on a brothel um, really? what is a brothel dan it's where prostitutes ply their trade <laughs> a nice a nice rock and roll piece of vocabulary there dan ply their trade it means where they work so yeah place where prostitutes work um which was apparently there before Buckingham Palace. And before anyone says anything, we are not calling the Queen a prostitute. Okay. You are in a way though, aren't you? <laughs> I'm definitely not. I'm just saying before she was there, apparently some hookers were there. Okay. Yeah. And that is the end of it. Um, and another thing that you will know, Dan, that many of the listeners may not know, is the sort of language that people from London invented called Cockney. Do you know why this language was invented, Dan? So they could talk without the police knowing what they were talking about. Yes, exactly. Um, so it's put the east part of London, which is like the poor area of London, well, was and really still is. Um, so, yeah, they used they invented this language so the police couldn't understand. Um, many words still exist. There are a few extremely famous ones. For example, the word barnet. What does that mean, Dan? Uh, your hair. Exactly. It's quite complicated to explain, but it's something connected to rhyming because Barnet Fair is a place in London and that rhymes with hair. So we say you're Barnet. Very common, actually. Um, speaking of Barnet, Dan, you yeah. have had the same Barnet for 27 years. When are you going to change it? If it works, it works. Does it work? Oh, or you tell me. Uh, well, we don't. We know it works now because Dan the man, as he said last week, has a girlfriend. <laughs> yep, still going strong. <laughs> so next week, actually, Dan, I'm going to get my barnet cut just exactly like, like yours. <laughs> yeah, if it works, it works. <laughs> exactly. Um, and another question for you, Dan. How often does it rain in London? A lot, every day. Well, I've got some studies here and it actually only rains on 29% of the days and there are more rainy days in Miami, Florida, New York, Sydney, Rio de Janeiro and Mexico City than London. I don't believe that for a second. Well, well Mexico I, City rains more than London. All of these cities have more rainy days on average in any given year than London. You can look that up, Dan. Remember, look that up as research. This is one thing I'm actually sure about because I okay. did a lot of research about this. The problem is with the sunshine hours, apparently, um, because that is very low in comparison to those cities. Speaking of sunshine, I'm looking at Dan the Man on Skype now, and he has a beautiful red face <laughs> because of the temperature in the south of France, where yeah. he is living the high life. So if you are living the high life, it's, you know, living a luxury life. It's not red, it's brown. It's, uh... It looks very red, Dan. It's like a nice caramel colour. 
<laughs> anyway, well, I will let you get back to your red face um, and go outside to hopefully add to your tan. Remember, tan is well what normal people get when they go to the beach. Dan mm. the man, not so lucky on that front. I'm burnt. <laughs> yeah, so enjoy your tomato skin and we will speak to you again soon. Well, it's better than mozzarella skin, so at least I've... <laughs> That's good. You've you've moved from mozzarella to a tomato. You would make a fantastic sandwich. <laughs> that's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. <laughs> well, that's me, Dan. I'm a nice guy. I'm going to go now probably to... Get hit by a train? Maybe. And then after I'm hit by a train, I will go to Postman's Park, Dan. Okay? Yeah. For what? You haven't done anything yet. Well, I have. I just said something nice to you. Just don't leave my coffin on the tube, okay? Yeah, okay. I can't promise that. <laughs> Thanks a lot. We'll speak right. to you soon. See you later. Okay, you later. so that was Dan the Man and me speaking about London. Remember to let me know if you noticed any difference in the sound quality. But let's look at that rock and roll vocabulary. We had the word coffin, which is not a good thing. It's like the box that you go to when you die. Cabs, which are taxis, um, also had the word barriers on the tube, which where you put your ticket, we call them barriers. And one thing, actually, because I didn't have much time, I've put many pictures of these things on the website. Instead of questions, I have put pictures. But there are also some questions. Um, Dan the man said he managed to flag down a car. Um, which is when you stop a car and ask someone for a lift. There's a fantastic picture of that on the website, actually. And we had the word faint, which is normally when you feel not so good and then you fall to the floor unconscious. Again, great picture on the website. Um, we had the word broken down, which is specifically used for a car when it stops working. And um, we had a very nice phrase when I said to Dan, um, I will have a word for you to get you in at Postman's Park. And remember, if you have a word for someone, that means you speak to someone to recommend your friend. Often for jobs, you say, mm, I would like to work in your office. Could you have a word with your manager for me, is an example. And um, we had the word hooker, um, which remember is like a prostitute. And I even have a picture of that on the website. Google chose the picture though, okay? Not me. And um, we had the word brothel, which is where prostitutes or hookers work. Dan used a nice phrase actually when he said a brothel is the place where prostitutes ply their trade, which is like a very poetic way to say where they work. Um, we had the phrasal verb look up when I said to Dan, you can look up the fact that there are more rainy days in Miami than London. So you can do the research. Very common, that one. It comes up a lot in the podcast, so obviously it's very common. And the last one was um, living the high life. When I said to Dan, he is living the high life in the south of France. Like a life of luxury is another way to say it. A very nice phrase. Anyway, thanks for listening. Hopefully for next week's podcast, I can find a different room to record. In the meantime, just keep calm and keep on rocking. Thanks so much for listening to Rock and Roll English. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit rockandrollenglish.com and facebook.com slash rockandrollenglish. We'll catch you next time.